Okay, uh, thanks everybody for coming to another lecture of Hempology 101. <laughs> thanks, Kay. And uh, yeah, for those in the room, uh, this lecture is happening every Wednesday uh, um, at 3.30 to 4. You're welcome to stay here. I, I made an announcement a few minutes ago, but uh, thanks for your patience, folks. Um, and thanks for coming, everybody, that came to the lecture. Uh, today's class is on cannabis research, something that in many ways, oh, thanks, uh, is a fundamentally important subject to people interested in uh, cannabis reform and certainly to anyone else uh, interested in, in drugs and, and drug policy and its effects. And so uh, today's class in some ways, though, is uh, going to be about research and uh, somewhat about uh, cannabis and cannabinoids leading into next week's lecture by Dr. Paul Hornby, who's uh, working uh, in laboratories, uh, or in his laboratory, I should say, uh, testing cannabis and cannabis extracts and, and working uh, in the field of research. Uh, and so uh, today, in some ways, I, I hope to really set that lecture up. Um, cannabis is, I would have to say, easily the most researched plant uh, and or drug uh, on the planet. Um, to my knowledge, there's uh, no plant even uh, close in terms of the number of studies that have been done around the world, not just by the United States and, and the National Institute for uh, Drug Abuse, or, or NIDA as it's called. Um, that organization, I think, claims to have around 13,000 studies themselves that they state document uh, negative impacts of the use of cannabis almost entirely. Um, I'll get to that research in a bit. But uh, the United States certainly isn't the only and wasn't the first country to study the effects of cannabis. The first country to commission a study was actually England. Back in 1893, they had the, I think it was the Indian Hemp Commission in India, uh, was uh, 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 published that year anyway. And uh, that uh, was meant to gain an understanding for the British uh, of the impact of uh, cannabis, which was predominantly hemp or sorry, hash, um, but uh, was used in, in all of its forms, and, uh, as it still is in India back in the 1800s, and the English weren't familiar with it at all, um, aside from knowing the French and, 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 you know, and smoke hash and, and some others, the English hadn't had much contact. And the study uh, certainly didn't recommend any punishments or, or that uh, cannabis use be considered a crime, in fact, it, basically just reported on the everyday uses of cannabis uh, by various religious communities predominantly. It's not really used in, in the same sense that we would use it you know, recreationally, where we would do it to more relax and enjoy ourselves. Um, there are, uh, I guess, a, a broad range of opinions in India um, today and back in the 1800s about the use of cannabis. It's quite different than here. Um, and uh, the, the upper class, although in some ways quite the same, the upper class really frowns upon its use and uh, certain uh, sects of, of the poor and, and what you might think of as either disenfranchised or religiously enlightened would use hash and chillums constantly. But there were seen to be you know, no ill health effects from the use of the, 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 the hash itself. And uh, again, otherwise the commission you know, uh, and, and you know, essentially the first study just, you know, confirmed what we all know, that cannabis is, for the most part, uh, a relatively benign, uh, you know, drug or, or plant to use, especially when you compare it to some of the alternatives. But even in and of itself, it's very, uh, any of the studies that have come out uh, that, that have been done in a real rational and, and scientific way have, have come out constantly you know, confirming again how, how light its impact is. Ironically, there weren't really any studies done in the 1920s and the 1930s 
when cannabis was being made illegal in country after country around the world. It was like 1923 here in Canada, 1928 in England, 1937 in the United States, and uh, there were no studies being presented uh, to back uh, those laws up. In fact, uh, the American Medical Association was one of the groups opposing prohibition in the United States in the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. And so, uh, ironically, it was actually the passing of that law that brought on the next study, known as the LaGuardia Commission, done uh, in uh, New York City, because the mayor of New York City, who is in charge of like the biggest municipal police force in the country, you know, saw that this new law was being brought in and, and wanted to gain an understanding of what kind of an impact it would have on policing in New York because the federal government was coming up with this marijuana tax act and this reefer madness campaign that was you know coming uh, you know condemning uh, uh, you know marijuana um, but uh, the mayor of New York hadn't heard of any problems and uh, when uh, this study was done uh, the, the LaGuardia Commission uh, you know again you know within the, the city of New York itself not, not broader than that but uh, the results were no different than the first study which were that cannabis was essentially you know not a problem that it didn't uh, create crime that it, it didn't cause bad ill effects um, and uh, otherwise the mayor of New York Again, in 1937, the, the, the year after the Marijuana Tax Act came out, uh, you know, was uh, you know, commissioned a, a report that you know, said that these laws were uh, a waste of time, that there was no problem. That, uh, and, and so uh, uh, I wouldn't be able to name off you know, study after study in the United States that contradicted the laws. There, there have been a, a few. Uh, essentially every time the, the U.S. government has actually tried to put a commission together, it's, it's gone against their own policies, so they ignored it and buried it. Um, but uh, in Canada here, the uh, Canadian government uh, started, uh, I think, in 1970 and eventually uh, published in 73, uh, the Ladane Commission. And the Ladane Commission was to look at all drugs. And I should have brought the, uh, the book because the uh, uh, commission itself has come up with a really big book here on other drugs. But they, uh, and, and this wasn't their initial plan, I understand, but they came out and published a separate book just on cannabis because there's so much information that not only uh, uh, they felt was, was important, but was so different than their study of other drugs that they didn't want to include the information on cannabis with the information about you know MDMA and, and heroin and all these other street drugs that were being or even legal drugs being used for non-medicinal purposes because that was their study was the non-medicinal use of drugs legal or illegal and uh, they uh, essentially found the same thing <laughs> as, as everybody else that, that did a, a, a good study which is that uh, cannabis is, is relatively harmless and they recommended the decriminalization of cannabis in Canada. Again, this is 1973, so 38 years ago, our own government realized the folly in their laws. I, I should have brought it, um, but uh, um, about 10 years ago, the uh, Canadian government, uh, again, you know, recognized the need to, to look into this subject. And uh, th there were, I, I believe, two commissions sort of uh, set out at the same time, or, or committees, uh, at the turn of the century. One uh, by the uh, um, House of Commons itself, um, but uh, that, that didn't really amount to much. But uh, more importantly, the Senate, um, under the leadership of Pierre-Claude Nolan, um, held a, a, a series of talks uh, across country where presentations were made from police forces, health agencies, you know, anybody interested and in, in all potential stakeholders were invited to these uh, Senate uh, hearings. Uh, I, I participated in both the ones held over in Vancouver, well Richmond one of them, but uh, um, the uh, uh, Senate, which was made up of uh, members of all parties, in fact the chair, Senator Claude Nolan, is a conservative himself, 
Um, and uh, the uh, uh, report that, that came out um, uh, essentially recommended the, the legalization of, of cannabis. Uh, and, and while it wasn't worded as strongly as some of us would like, it was certainly a, a condemnation of the, the war on cannabis in, in particular. And uh, it uh, would uh, get buried along with every other study that didn't say what the government wanted to. Um, now, on the other hand, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, the government, and in particular the United States government, um, likes to, to fund more specific uh, studies into uh, perceived potential health uh, impacts with um, what some of us might call preconceived ideas. And I mentioned these 13,000 studies done by the National Institute of Drug Abuse. Well, uh, they will often cite having you know the, these studies as, as proof of the negative impacts of cannabis. Well, um, those studies have one by one been proven wrong due to the flawed research techniques which were used uh, in many people's opinions to come up with, with bad evidence. Um, for example, there's some famous monkey studies that were done in the 1970s that are really horrific to look at. If you ever see some of the videos online, um, it, it's really, really sad what they did with these monkeys because they would put gas masks uh, with cannabis smoke on their heads for like 12 hours and not give them oxygen or anything else other than this cannabis smoke to breathe. And then they would take the gas mask off and do some studies and conclude that the cannabis smoke caused brain damage. It was actually the lack of oxygen, obviously, that yeah. caused the brain damage. But the reports were widely publicized. They gained international attention as cannabis smoke causing brain damage. It, it was only years later when the actual details of the study were dug up by critics that it was known how you know, defective the, the actual studies were. And uh, I uh, listened to, had the privilege of listening to Dr. Uh, James Guywitz uh, speak on the subject. Uh, and and he, he's just brilliant at, at ripping apart uh, the studies that tend to, to prove or suggest that uh, cannabis use has uh, severe or substantial negative impacts. Because uh, the, the preponderance of evidence, that is, um, a lot of times studies can be done and they can have either small numbers of people or the parameters aren't set up correctly. And so it's, it's almost easy to come up with, with bad science, especially in areas where the science is developing and they don't really know how to come up with proper research techniques, right? So smoking, for example, isn't something that laboratories can actually accommodate for very easily. They have to come up with all sorts of funky equipment to be able to um, get a consistent dose where they know exactly what is in the smoke and uh, do tests on the effects of, of cannabis smoke on people. Um, the, the, uh, and, and so uh, it's taken them a long time just to even develop uh, certain techniques in the laboratory that allow for consistent results to, to come from uh, again, you know, smoking in particular. Um, so they, you know, maybe the scientists can't be blamed on all the, the flawed research because it's a lot of trial and error to come up with better techniques. But um, science uh, would like to think that the way that they prove things isn't just in one study with one test group, but by having the, the same study or very similar studies done in other settings with other researchers and have uh, similar or duplicate results. And then the scientists will say that you know, the preponderance of evidence or the, the majority of evidence or, uh, would suggest something. Uh, and so uh, um, it's something that like when, when I, uh, a lot of studies will come out uh, against what the you know, uh, other scientists have suggested quite consistently, but more often than not, you have to look at who's funding the research and, and what their incentives and, and motivations are. Um, here in Canada, there's been uh, very little research done uh, on cannabis, uh, uh, and certainly uh, very little on the medicinal benefits of it. I realized one of my mistakes in there, as I said, we uh, the government spent $25 billion so far for plant systems. That was as of a few years ago.